What's up guys, it's your fit doc aka Kristen Simone and I'm back with your weekly dose of medicine. Today we are going to be talking about what I would be doing if I was a pre-medical student right now. So if you're interested, keep watching. Thanks you all for coming back. Um, if you are new to my channel, Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you get something out of this video. I hope that it's valuable to you and I hope that this helps you in the future. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing is a vibe, if you feel me. And it's free. It's free. But it helps me. So please, 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 please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified every time that I post a video. But I wanted to get right into this video that way you can get everything that you need to be successful to reach your goals of becoming a physician so without further ado let's hop into it so as a first year medical student i did things a little bit differently in my application i ended up applying twice but i did not apply to this school this is this was my first time applying to the school that i'm at right now and the first time that i applied i did not do things well i did not do things in a thorough manner in my opinion i think that it was just it wasn't well thought out this time though, I think I did things right. So now that it is April or no, now that it is March, we're at the end of March. I want to give you some tips on what I it's will be Friday, doing. March 31st, 2023. Not Siri telling me what to do. Girl. Anyways, now that it's the end of March, I just wanted to go over some things that you should be thinking about since we are nearing the application cycle. So for the AAMC, the application cycle opens up, I believe, at the end of May. And the ACOMAS opens up at the beginning of June or the end of June. Sometime in June for the ACOMAS. If you are just watching this video and you don't know what um, AAMC or ACOMAS means, ACOMAS is the application for DO schools and AAMC is the application for medical schools, like allopathic medical schools, ND schools. And so um, DO opens up a little bit later. They also close later. And so if you're interested in being a DO, definitely take a look at that. But also, I believe that as a medical student or as a pre-medical student, you should be looking at both both schools because they both essentially do the same things. There are no restrictions on either degree. As of right now, I would have already taken my MCAT. I would have already taken my MCAT. I would have taken it in January because if you're anything like me, I'm at the basic standardized tests. I would want to give myself extra time to retake it. Um, that way I would still be able to um, get my score back in time and be able to apply and still apply early because the key is applying early to these schools. So I would have taken my MCAT already. I would have taken it already and I would have gotten my score back about a month or so ago. So if I received the score that I was happy with, I would not retake it again. If I was not happy with it, I would be studying right now. I'd probably take a week off after I received my score and then I would probably look into like some sort of class. I took a blueprint class whenever I retook my MCAT and I probably will be thinking about that as well, a tutor more specifically. I don't necessarily think a class is necessary, but a tutor is more expensive, but it's expensive for a reason because I think that they really could be that one-on-one -on -one, um, tutoring that you would be needing. So I will be doing that. If I did not pass, I will be studying right now. I plan to take it by July or August. And so this gets a little complicated because you want to make sure that you're not going to burn out, right? Um, so really, it's up to you how fast you want to be taking it. But if you're anything like me, again, I want to be done with that MCAT, okay? I don't want this hanging over my head for the next four months. No. I want to be able to take it probably in May, study in March, study in April, take it in May, and be done, okay? But, you know, if you want to take a month or so off after you, retook, after you took the MCAT the first time, I get it. I mean, I took the MCAT the first time in January. My, my story is so weird, y'all, but I took it in January. I applied to some DO schools very last minute. I got a low score. Check out my video here if you want to see, like, you know, my transition story. Um, but I got a low score, and then I ended up retaking the MCAT in August. But I was working at the time as a pharmacy technician. I started studying again in May because I decided not to go to this DO school that I thought I was going to go to, but I decided not to do it. So I ended up studying back again in May and took it in August. So my journey was a little different because, like I said, I was waiting to get accepted to a DO school. And it ended up happening for me, but I quickly realized that I was, I was um, going to be in a lot of debt. And um, I didn't know anything about the school. I didn't feel comfortable going. I just wanted to, like, go to school right out of undergrad, and it wasn't a good enough reason for me. So I ended up not doing it. I ended up declining the offer, and I ended up just 
getting back on track and I retook the MCAT. So again, I took my MCAT in August, which you can still do right now if you don't like your score. And that's what I did. I will also be looking into, depending on if I'm happy with my MCAT or not, I would be looking into um, medical scribing. I think that you can do that part time if you're living with your parents. To be clear, I will only suggest being a medical scribe if you are in college or if you are living with your parents because medical scribes do not get paid much. For someone who is living on their own or married or is a little older, I would suggest looking for medical assistant jobs that don't require you to be certified first or that require certification on the job or I would look for research. There are plenty of research coordinator jobs out there. Also, you could look into CNA work. Just look, y'all, there's a lot of jobs that are out there, as well as just continue to shadow doctors and build relationships with them throughout your process of applying. Or if you're just like studying for your MCAT, maybe you have other support through a spouse or a family or the bank where you don't have to necessarily work a full-time job, maybe. And you can work as a medical scribe part-time and then study for the MCAT. But I will only do that if you're working part-time as a medical scribe and if it's not a specialty because that can be a lot of learning. I worked as a HEMOC medical scribe and it was a lot of work. It was like basically another class. Um, for the first couple months of my job. It was like I was working 12 hours trying to understand the terminology, trying to update the patient's charts. And if a patient went to the ER in between the last visits that we saw the patient, I would have to update that. So it was a whole lot. I would not recommend doing both of those at the same time. That's a lot. But if you're working in the emergency department part-time or if you're working in the family medicine clinic part-time, I think that those are doable things to do while you're studying for the MCAT. Let's say you don't have the support and you have to have a full-time job. If you're not already, I would look into being a research coordinator, a clinical research coordinator, medical assistant, um, look into being a CNA, look into being an EMT. Some of those jobs require certifications. Those are good jobs that can pay you enough to live um, and you'll still get that clinical experience. So you can like kill two birds with one stone where you're living, but you're still able to apply that to your application. You all don't have to start your clinical experiences um, like a year before you apply, okay? That's an unpopular opinion, but I was a medical scribe. I started in April. I applied in June. I worked for a while, but by the time I started getting interviews in October, November, I had been working there for April, May, June, July, August, September, October, six, seven months. So I already had a lot of experience. I could already speak on a lot of things um, in my application. And it by no means felt lazy. It didn't seem like I was just trying to pick it up just to pick it up. And you had this job just to say that I was a medical scribe, but I actually learned a lot and I really enjoyed my job. So you don't have to be in a rush to pick up these clinical experiences like a year before you apply to medical school. If you do, great. I'm not discouraging you, but you don't have to. I was a pharmacy technician before I became a medical scribe, so I was already working towards that anyway. But if you want to do something new, don't let that discourage you. Don't think about you not being able to put it on your application or it not being applicable to you because in your application you can put how long you plan on working there. Even if it is a future date, you can put a future date down in there. So don't don't think too hard about that. If you're interested in it, go for it. I'll be thinking about different people that I want to ask for letters of recommendation from. I will want to give my evaluator at least a month to be able to write my letter. So if you want to get your application ready for May or June, then I'll be thinking by, in about a month, I'll be thinking to ask them about a letter. And really you can ask them now. I mean, the more time that they have, the better. So they don't feel as rushed. But I'd be thinking about who I want to get my letters of recommendation from. I'll also be looking for a mentor. I'll be looking for a mentor right now. Anyone that is a younger physician because they are more likely more hip to the application process and how competitive it is. I remember talking to a physician and she was older and I didn't really have much experience. All I had was like a personal trainer under my name, right? And so she was like, well, no, we can still make that happen. We can still work and, you know, see how we can, can relate that to your application. But really, y'all, medical school is getting more competitive. And being a personal trainer was not going to cut it for my application. Things are getting harder. I don't know why, but they're getting harder. And you need a physician that is more hip to the application so they can help you get to where you need to be in order to be competitive. So I prefer a younger physician. Ask your family members. Ask your friends. Join SNMA as a pre-medical student, Student National Medical Association, join that associ association because it's a networking association that can get you those those contacts that you need to be able to get your name out there, be able to actually know what you need from a valuable, credible source. 
So that's what I'll be doing right now. I'll also be looking to pipeline programs. The school that I'm at specifically right now, UNC has um, the MED program, which is basically um, a medical education course that um, is an eight week course over the summer that allows pre-medical students and pre-dental students to understand the coursework and the vigor of medical school. And so I would encourage people to look for programs like that. Just look up pipeline programs for, for schools, medical schools. Literally type that into your browser, look and see what comes up because a lot of times those pipeline programs can get you familiar with the faculty and staff that are gonna be looking at your application, that are gonna be around campus that you may see if you get accepted into those schools. And it's good to put on your application because it helps you stand apart from like the other people that are applying. Because you've already shown that you're invested in the school because you took part in their pipeline program. It's called a pipeline program for a reason. It's a pipeline to get you where you need to go from start to finish. I would just make sure that I'm realistic about if I'm going to be ready to apply in May. You need to be planning to apply early, like no later than July. No, no later than that because it's just so many applications, y'all, and you want to get your name out there first. You just do. It's easier whenever there's less people coming through. That doesn't mean that if you apply last minute, you won't get the opportunity, but it's kind of like if there's traffic, but you show up early, like you're not going to be caught in traffic. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain it. For instance, me, I got offered a lot of interviews in October. If you didn't apply until November, I've already got an interview. They've already seen my application. So it's just, it's harder. Like if you wait later, it's harder. It's just harder to get through. It just is, it just is what it is. I would encourage you to apply early. And if you don't think your MCAT score is high enough, to apply, which I am always an advocate to apply anyway, uh, but I understand why you shouldn't because of cost reasons and things like that. But if you feel like you're not ready, then just wait. Just wait and I think the most important thing is to really tackle the MCAT first. That way you can get that test out of the way. That we can get it out of the way. But you can always work on clinical experiences. You can always do something part time. You can always ask your job if they have a leave of absence. Some jobs have an educational leave of absence. I know my job as a pharmacy technician did. I had to work things out with my boss to be able to make that happen for me. But that's what I would do. And if you have to work full-time, then I would plan on studying for eight months to a year for the MCAT um, while you're working full-time. So if that does not correlate with you applying right now, then maybe you should potentially wait because it is March and the MCAT is not offered after September. April, May, June, July, August, September. If you only give yourself six months to study and you're working full-time, and you haven't taken it yet, I just, you could, I'm not going to knock it. As long as everything else is in line and your pre-medical experiences are in line, your community service, your letters of recommendation, you feel like your application is pretty strong and all you're missing is your MCAT, I'm not going to say no to that in my opinion, but I, but I think it's just important to be realistic about where you are. If you have any questions, just let me know. Jump them down in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. I'm always an advocate for applying. It's smart to apply to about 15 schools at least um, because it's just so competitive both ND and DO. I applied to 19 schools I think and so I think that it's smart to do that. Now granted that costs a lot of money. There is an assistance program that the AAMC offers and people may qualify for that. I'll drop that link in the description below um, if you're interested. That way you don't have to pay for any primary application fees, secondary application fees for up to 20 schools and the MCAT. So that saves you a lot of money. That saves you almost four thousand dollars right there. Maybe even more than that. That's pretty much all I have for this video. I am so glad to be done with my MCAT. I'm not even going to hold you. I'm so glad that I'm done with that test. Please like and comment if you felt that this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them. And thank you for watching. Thank you if you're still here. And I will see you in my next. Peace. Tell me what you're seeing me Gotta be something different You must be made for me Patience is nothing In and out, in and out, in and out Arguing, traveling, difficult Let more